All right, so getting back to our project at the moment, we've started to introduce this concept of using local storage, sort of like a super cookie to start to save data. And how we want to use this is uh, storing the person's email and password. That's enough that we need at the moment to create an account. We could set it up that we ask for their first name and last name and their birthday and all of that if we wanted, but to keep it simple at the moment, just an email and a password is enough to create an account. We see the syntax here. Local storage, set item, what's the name of the cookie, what's the value. We saw in the documentation uh, we could use get item to give us the value. Uh, let's do this here. Let's comment out that set item, so double slash there. Let's comment it out for a moment. Let's deactivate it, double slash at the beginning. Actually, wait a minute. No, we don't. We don't want to do that. Don't do that because they won't save anything. Uh, leave it like that. What we want next is alert. Local storage dot get item. So set item will save the data. Don't comment that. Sorry, I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, you're going to set the item, set the data. And then here, okay, well, get item in a, in a pop-up, in a basic pop-up, not a jQuery pop-up, uh, but a built-in kind of pop-up. Let's alert, let's pop-up, local storage, dot get item, quotes, username. So the opposite of set item is get item, and we're saying get me the data inside of an item, inside of a cookie, named this, which is username. Save it and run it, and um, put in an email, put in a password, click join, and then you should see the pop-up that happens uh, from your username. Uh, double parentheses? Yes, because they, they match here. If you select one, it matches right here with get item, and then this other one matches with alert. So just to see how this looks, uh, going to run it and sign up. Join. Get a very simple pop-up. The ones that we make through jQuery Mobile are better. Very simple pop-up that saw what was stored in that cookie. Right there. So uh, this again is just for testing. We, we don't actually really want to do this. So I'm just showing you. Set item to save the cookie get item to retrieve the data in the cookie. So that one we will comment out. If you saw that it worked, just comment it out. We don't need it. We don't need that pop-up popping up. OK, so when we use an app or a website, it seems so flawless. I'm going to uh, create a brand new account on Facebook. I'm going to type in my email address and my password and click go, and I've got an account. Well, a lot of stuff happened behind the scenes, like we're starting to do here. Do your passwords match, number one. Now, if I'm trying to create um, a Facebook account, and uh, my name is John Smith, I might uh, have conflicts with someone else named John Smith that already has a Facebook account. So Facebook has to check, does that email or password already exist? Does that um, user already exist? Okay, well, sorry, you're going to have to pick another email, another name, or something. So this happens a lot, like if a business is trying to create an account. I want to be Victor's Pizza, and I want to create a brand new Facebook account. Well, someone in New York already created Victor's Pizza, so I'm going to be Victor's Pizza number two. I'm going to be Victor's Pizza San Diego. I'm going to have to choose a different name. 
So that's another thing we have to deal with. What if a person is trying to create an account in our app, but that account's already been created? Either from someone else or the person forgot that they already created an account. So our next, next step here is after checking, do your passwords match? The next step that we will do is, do you already have an account? Don't try to create another account, you have an account. Okay, well, if they don't have an account, let's create the account. So here's another conditional statement. After here, we will say conditional statement to check if the email has already been used or not. Since we're only asking for email and password, email is the unique identifier uh, differentiating different users. So we need to check, has that email ever been used? So we will do our if statement. If open close parentheses, open curly brace. Let's move that curly brace to its next line. If else. Curly brace is there. Enter to break that. So if parentheses, space, curly brace, open, open curly brace, close curly brace, space, else, curly brace, and curly brace. Again, I'm going to lose track of what that curly brace is, so we should mark it saying end if else for checking if email already exists. So here's another conditional statement. If whatever I'm talking about here is true, do this. Or else it's got to be false, so do that. Here we're checking again two things. If the email exists, let them know. You already have an account. If it doesn't exist, OK, let's create an account. You're new. The way we check this is, again, localstorage.getItem. Let's check, does that item exist? if local storage dot get item and then so here uh, open close parentheses connected to get item these other parentheses for the if Now what we've got currently, which we're actually going to change, but let me write it here, username. This is what makes sense. We've got a cookie called username, and that's where we're storing their, their email. But we're going to need to save two things. We're going to need to save their email and their password. So the way that we will do this in a moment is the name of the cookie will be their email. And the value being associated with, with it will be their password. So actually, before we write anything here, let's, let's remove that for a moment. We're going to write the note here. Line 75 was just sort of to explain how local storage works, how we will actually use it in a moment is like this local storage dot set item no quotes temp 
val in email signup, comma, temp val in password signup. No quotes on either. Now I have this as a comment. We do not want this as real code. I'm commenting it out. We want this line, but not yet. This is the problem with creating the code. In my mind, I know exactly what I wanted to do. But if I was doing this from scratch, I'd need to reason this out. OK, well, I want to save the email and the password. Then I need to retrieve it. And this is the problem that I know how this will all end. And if I just say, well, let's write this A, B, C all the way down, it won't quite make sense. So we are going to, several times throughout the course, jump and do this, but then come back to the, do that, and then come back to do this. Because the logic of it, sometimes it's out of order. The order of the code, I have that all uh, ready. But the logic of it, sometimes we have to jump around. So we're going to do this eventually. We're using the, the, the person's email as the name of the cookie. And what's being stored in it is their password. So here then, what we're going to get item is their email, not username. We're not going to really even use that. We're going to comment that out in a moment. But we're saving their password linked to their email. That's what we're going to do in a moment. So under get item, temp val in email signup. Between those parentheses, we'll add a space. And then we'll do equals, equals, equals. That's three equals together. There's no spaces in between each of these equals. Uh, we're going to say if what's inside of this cookie is exactly the same as null, N-U-L-L, -L, this user does not exist. Else, this user does exist. So we've uh, we've seen equals before. Single equals. So just for complete, completeness in your notes, basically assignment. Put the thing on the right into the thing on the left. When we have just a single equals, it's an assignment operator. We're assigning this. Whatever is on this side, put it into that. This is an object. This is a variable. This stores something. Let's put that into this. It's like if I have this container. This, this is the container called this. And into it, I'm going to put um, lemonade. So what I'm putting into the container is lemonade. I'm putting this into that. Single equals. If we've got double equals, so this is when we had, um, let's say, cat double equals dog. This is comparison. Does the thing on the right? Is the thing on the right the same as on the left? <clears throat> Triple equals, etc. 
exact comparison is the thing on the left exactly typewise the same uh, so clearly okay cat is not the same as dog but isn't cat the same as cat what's the difference between the two cats I wrote there capital letter lowercase uppercase it's not exactly the, z the same um, so this is what we're doing here let's get what's inside of this cookie is it null and null is that it doesn't exist so what we're saying here let's look in in our cookies is there a cookie with this name no it doesn't exist we're trying to get a cookie it doesn't exist so we're saying it doesn't exist anything else anything else besides nothing will then land us inside of else there is something there not necessarily not necessarily the correct data but there is something in that cookie uh, a real email address a smiley face a number as long as it's not empty it's, as long as it's not null that it doesn't exist we'll be okay This is just a note that we wrote, so we'll also write some console output. User does not exist versus user does exist. So this is just our note inside of the code, but this is actually some console output for us. On the else part, if the user does not exist, we should, right, if the user does exist, we should tell them, uh, you've already got an account. If the user doesn't exist, then let's actually store the data. Let's do what I said here. Let's actually set item, let's actually store their email and their password. We've confirmed, if this part of the code works, or is triggered, we've confirmed there is nothing saved in that cookie. So, I think we'll be safe to copy it if you typed it properly. Okay, into our local storage memory area, we're gonna set an item, we're gonna create a cookie. It's a cookie with this um, particular current email that they're trying to sign in with, whatever value that currently is, a at a.com and we're saving the password that they're typing all, uh, all turned uppercase right there. In theory then, the next time that we try to do this again, if we try to save an account that we've already saved, it should then trigger this next part here, you already exist. So we can test this a little bit at this point if we try to save, if we try to create an account, this is when we're going to quickly start to use a at a.com and b at b.com. Don't worry about putting real email addresses that you're going to uh, waste your own time. We're going to create super simple passwords, super simple emails just for testing. Go ahead and save it and, and try testing it. Uh, you should get this feedback that it doesn't exist or it does exist. Let me confirm on mine first. So I'm going to run it. I'm going to F12 right away so that I can confirm that uh, 
I'm going to F12 right away so that I can confirm that there's no issues before I go too much further. OK, no issues. I'm going to sign up. I'm going to try something brand new. I'm going to type cat at cat.com. And then password A, password A. Join. So that's all normal so far. User does not exist. I have not tried to create this account before yet. Cat at act.com does not exist. I can confirm now that I've tried to do join. I can go to storage and I can go look at the local storage. I can go look at the local storage to confirm that that's saving. Cat at cat.com. The user does not exist. If I go to the application, it still has the old username that I created a while ago. That doesn't matter anymore. But now I've got this brand new cookie, this brand new key that has the email um, that I've used here, and then the password is just simply a. If I, you know, if I go back and try to sign up, and this time, okay, I'm gonna create. I, I don't remember. Did I create an account called Cat? And I'm putting in my password here. Password. I'm gonna try to join. I don't. I don't remember if I created an account. I'm gonna join. User does exist. I'm trying to use Cat. I'm trying to do new user with an email that already existed with a different password. Sure. User does exist because the application says, here, you've already got that user. So this is verifying that, isn't it? It's checking, it's checking, does the user exist, does it not? A very, very, we're doing a very simple Log in, log out. There's still more to do to it, of course, but we're kind of building upon it. I'll do two things here, then we'll then I'll pause for questions. Uh, to uh, have this fully set up, um, we're telling ourselves they do not exist. We try to store the data. At this point, then, um, I don't need to have, again, like here, I'm not giving the user any feedback that it worked. I'm giving myself feedback in the console. But if this worked properly, I should clean out those fields. And then I should tell them, you know, thank you for, for joining, sign in. Didn't we create a pop-up that said that? Didn't we, get a, didn't we create a successfully signed up sort of pop-up? So let's, let's use it. Uh, first, well, let's do a note right here. Since this user doesn't exist, Save them to local storage. We've confirmed they don't exist because they're in this block. The very first time we try to create an account, it should hit no. They don't exist. OK, well, we know they don't exist, so let's, let's save them. Next, we're going to empty out that form they've successfully signed in. We don't want them to, uh, to you know, click uh, s sign up again with the exact same credentials. So we'll say, then clear the input fields, all of them. We had a way using .val to set those fields to empty before, but I don't want to do that three times. There's a way to do it one time all at once. That's like this dollar L form signup on the whole form itself. 
we can do an operation here, a, a command square brackets zero dot reset. The syntax is a little weird, but short answer. We've got a form. Let's reset. Uh, don't worry about that. Oh, that's a race syntax. Don't worry about it at the moment. All right. Okay, here, if we had three fields, if we had 30 fields, I don't want to use the way we did it up here. Right? I said, let's clean out the password and let's clean out the conf confirm one at a time. No, I just want to clear out the whole form right here. I could do it the other way for all three input fields. And for three inputs, it's not so much. But when we've got a much more complex sign-up form, first name, last name, password, birthday, blah, 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 I don't want to individually clean out each of those fields. I just want to reset the whole form. That's what that does there. And then we've got the um, success pop-up. Existing account, we have the successful sign up. We'll say then pop up the login button. We've got the pop-up for the successful sign-up right here. Uh, we've made a pop-up through jQuery Mobile before, so it's the same idea. Dollar L um, pop-up success sign-up dot pop-up. We have to sort of initialize it so that it's going to behave like a pop-up. Copying and pasting that so that uh, we, we actually make it open. Remember, we did that quotes open, comma, and then what kind of animation did we want? We can do flip, we can do slide up, etc. But yes, that was the idea. So first we'll say open, then comma, Curly braces this is the part where then the uh, the auto completion confused me. Remember, so transition, but then outside of the quote, pound, uh, I mean uh, colon, quotes, flip, What other pop-ups did we, I mean, what other animations did we have? Data transitions besides flip, anyone remember any others? Slide or slide up. Yeah, so if you'd like one of those other ones, put slide up or slide. There's also flow and stuff like that. I'll just do flip. So this is the same as we did uh, a little while ago. Whatever the name of our pop-up is called, dot pop-up, so prepare it to pop-up. And then right here, then actually open it and then transition it with that animation. On the else here, um, this user does exist. We give ourselves some console output user does exist. We have a pop-up to also tell people this account already exists. So we're going to do exactly the same over here. We've got L 
pop error sign up exists. You've got that pop up waiting. So, new line here l pop up error sign up exists dot pop up and then dot pop up plus open. This user does exist, so then show a pop up. Letting user know this. And that's dollar L pop error sign up exists dot pop up. Copy and paste it so that I do the exact same way, but then open and then transition. So this is just the same as before. I will have the open parameter, comma, curly braces. So I can do my, my uh, options here. Transition, outside of the quote, space colon, and then flip that. So in the event that uh, the user does not exist, store their info, reset the form, pop up telling them you've signed up. Or else the possibility is they don't exist, or uh, it does exist. Uh, so then, uh, notice I'm not clearing out the form. I could do that if you want. Um, it's not right or wrong, and it's simply the same, the same line here. I could also add that line right above that. This is just for you to decide, if you think about it, if you are trying to create an account and it tells you that already exists, and if I were to use reset there, it would clean everything out. And you're like, well, what did I type? It told me I already exist, but what did I type? In this case, it might not be useful to clean out the whole form because then it would also clean out the, the email field. So you could leave it like this, that it's not going to clear the form so that it shows you, oh, I'm trying to log in with the account that already exists. Let me just check mine works, and then we'll pause for a little help. Um, let me run it in the browser. Let's see, so I'm going to sign up. I'm going to do a brand new account just to fully test it. Dog at dog.com, password dog. Join. Thank you. Ready to go. Log in. Takes me to log in. Go back. I can go back. If I try to uh, sign up with dog, I've already done dog. So, okay, dog at dog. We're going to do password cat. That's not the part that matters. The part that matters is the email. So if I join on that, pop-up account already exists. So I didn't clear the form to show people, you're trying to sign in with dog, account already exists. Even if the password is the same as before, dog at dog with password dog, well, that's not what matters. What matters is the email has already been used. Oh, I'm going to do doge at doge.com. Join. Welcome. That one doesn't exist, so we're ready to go. Now, join or returning user still doesn't work. We're about to do that in a moment. But if you check the application, in my case, this is what I've saved so far. Cat at cat.com with password A and dog at dog with password dog. 
Doge password dog. So here's the code so far. That's um, anyone need a little help? A couple people. Okay, we'll be there one moment. This is the code here so far.
reader error.
everyone so let's go on here what this is um, what this is doing ladies what this is doing here is the um, that it's checking multiple things right is it uh, does the password match does the user exist and all of that so if it works you see how we're building it piece by piece what well, we first need to create accounts and then after that we can start to log in and such uh, so you can look at your application here and start to see all the stuff you're saving there and if you uh, want to delete some of this you can select a cookie and there's a little this is in Chrome and it's a little bit different in Firefox but so you can select some of these and delete them uh, you, should, you don't really need to delete any of this at the moment just create new accounts to fully test it but at this point if I've got um, just to do it one more time, I'm going to refresh it. I'm going to create an account again. Uh, so bill at bill.com, password bill, join. OK, so if it's working at this point, thank you, ready to go. I go to login. Of course, this login doesn't work yet because we've only been focusing on the creating an account. Next comes this part, which checks uh, does the account exist and such, uh, and then sign in. And uh, you know, I can go back there, I can go here. So this sign up is relatively complete. We could still polish up a few things here or there. Like I'm saying, it's not it's not comp it's not encrypting the passwords and such. We can we can do that later. Uh, we don't quite need it. It's uh, it's saving it as a cookie inside of the app. Uh, but you saw here, just to test it one more time, I you saw that I created bill at bill.com, but I'm trying to log in with cat password. If I do join on that, it should say account already exists. Okay, so that's all working. Um, let's deal with then the login part of it all. So login here, uh, we're going to need to, um, when a person clicks go, if I try to go right now, it won't work. Uh, it, it hasn't been set up to capture what happens when someone clicks go in returning user. So this is going to be familiar. We're going to use the same sort of big idea that we did with the the sign up so backing up for a moment this whole sign up works because we had an event handler that when we submitted the sign up form we run a function to sign up well backing up further from that we created a variable up here that represented the form with that ID 
which eventually runs this function sign up. So we're going to need the same three things. A variable representing the login form. We're going to then need an event handler representing what happens when you try to log in. Then we're going to need a function representing what then happens when we try to log in. So the good thing about um, JavaScript is that it can be very repetitive. The bad thing about JavaScript is that it can be very repetitive. So well, let's be repetitive right here. Let's back up to our main variable section. I've created a variable for the form to sign up. I need to create a variable for the form to log in. I'm just putting them in, in, in the order that I've written, that I'm writing right now, but you would be fine if you created the other such type of variable right next to each other. You know, the concept here is I've got a little spot where all my pop-up variables are. I could have all my form variables in a spot, or just write them in order. And the order of things does matter, but in this case, I think it wouldn't matter. Um, just because I like what it looks like, I will put it up here. I want to group together both of my $L form login. How did I spell it again? Capital I, probably. Um, ID equals form, yeah, login. So in the PG login screen, I have a form called form login. In the HTML, I've got a form to log in, and I very creatively called it form login. So then here we're creating variables representing that. Same way as before, the jQuery selector, this is basically find something. Up here we did find something with an ID, form sign up. Now we want to find something with an ID, a form login, which we represent by that variable. So quotes, pound, form, log, in. So eventually I will stop uh, being very surprised when I look at you and you forgot to put a, a pound sign there. In the beginning, of course, I will still act very surprised that you do that, but eventually, don't forget your pound sign there. And then dollar sign, L form login. Okay, so we did that last week. Then we're going to do the L form login dot submit, just like we did L form sign up submit. Okay, so create the variable, go down all the way to the end of the code where we've got our event, our event listeners. We've already got an event listener for sign up. We're going to do something like 99% the same for login. Dollar L form login dot submit. Once someone clicks the submit button of the login form, we will run a function, capture the event, and, and uh, invoke the, the function's log, login, which doesn't exist yet, which we'll create in a moment. But this is what I'm saying again about the, the repetition of it. Uh, we'll need to do that for We'll need to do this for other similar operations. OK, so function here, open close parentheses. Be very careful here. It's very easy to open that parenthesis and then forget, oh, here's my close parenthesis. Nope, that one closes. Submit. So open close for function. Then an open close curly brace, just following what I already did before. If it works once before, it should work again. Again, this is about the repetition of it all. If you've got the syntax, if you've got the practice, if, you, if you've done it once correctly one time, it'll probably also be correct in the future. OK, so 
function, I need an event there like before, and then inside of the curly braces, a function, fn login, parentheses for it, semicolon for it. So here we've got event. Here we've got fn log in parentheses on that, semicolon there, event there. Yes, these it all looks, you know, from a distance it all looks like like gibberish. Like you should just look at that, it's gibberish. But they all match. They all have a pair, basically, right? You put your cursor here, it should match up with the starting submit. You put your cursor on that curly brace, and it should then match up with the curly brace of function. You put your mouse on that parenthesis, it should match up with the parenthesis of this function, and so forth. So now we've got an event listener. So now we've got an event listener. Listen for the submit. When someone clicks the button, log in. Listen for for uh, for clicking submit and then run a function function login, which we don't have that function yet. We're creating it right here after the end of our function signup. Good thing I wrote that comment because that's dozens of lines up higher that I would have had to search. What is the end of that of? So right here we've got function fn login. Parentheses, curly braces, end function login. Oops, I was about to misspell this. Event. So now I've got, now it exists, it was okay that I was writing it here, but it didn't exist, I wasn't running it yet, so no errors, but if I tried to run it before I defined function login, I'd get an error, it would say something about missing function or unknown function, whatever it, the browser would say. And now here, once I press submit in the login screen, run a function. Just like before, we're giving ourselves a little console output saying this function is running. Fn login is running. And we want to prevent the default behavior, which was to refresh the screen. A few of you that have tried to go ahead and it's still not working logging in. Well, of course not. We haven't dealt with that. We've dealt with setting up an account, but not login. You've tried, to, you've tried to log in, you get an error. Well, the default behavior is refreshing everything. Just like the default behavior of sign up was to refresh everything, we need to prevent default. Event dot prevent default. Don't refresh everything. We're, we're preventing the default behavior of refreshing things because we need to do other things besides refreshing the screen. Very similar to our function. See, this is an example why it's cool to uh, do uh, right-click clone view. So you can look at your same file in two different locations. In this one pane, I'm looking at it in line 107. And in this other pane, I'm looking at it up on line 43. You don't have to do this, but the important thing is, again, the, the repetition of it. For my sign up, I did my console log, I did prevent default, and then I started to capture, I started to create variables that captured what was typed into the boxes. I need to do the same thing for my login screen. A person is going to type their email and their password, I need to capture those the same way that I did it for function sign up. So we'll create local scope variables in this function. Uh, 
for L in email login and L in password login, creating variables here. The AR dollar L in email login, assign it, put this thing into that thing, assign it, search for some node with some HTML node, some input field with an ID of in email login. So in the login screen, in the login screen, PG login, I've got my form, and then I've got my input field for email named in email login. So again, not a mystery. We've already done this once. We'll do it several times, uh, this object in there. Basically, I want to do this one more time, so comma, not a semicolon, because I, I want to do it again, another variable, dollar $l in um, password login equal to jQuery selector quotes ID, something with an ID of in password login right there in the login form asking for their email asking for the password not the confirm password there's no confirm password box in the login screen at the end of that line comma because one more we're going to create another variable so here I'm capturing what they typed into their email what they typed into the password. Don't we have to worry about uppercase, lowercase, and all of that? Didn't we deal with that before? The way we dealt with that before. Was doing two uppercase somewhere. Where do we do that? Oh, right here. So back up on the function of, um, of uh, sign up, eventually then we uh, set to uppercase their email and their password. We've used local storage to store their email and their password in all uppercase. So whatever the person is typing right now, into the email and the password, we also need to convert those into uppercase. So next item here, temp val in email login is equal to what we've just captured, l in email login dot val, comma, or not yet, uh, dot to uppercase parentheses, then comma. Give me the value that they typed into their email box. Turn it uppercase, store it here temporarily. Same thing for the password. Temp val in password from the login screen is equal to uh, what we've just captured in the object L in password login just the value dot to uppercase that one's got a semicolon end of statement there for the notes here Create objects, variables for the email and password input fields, and 
create variables, aka objects, uh, with uppercase versions of those. The reason we're converting it to uppercase in this point is back up at the top when we had our function uh, to create an account, function sign up. At that point, we stored their email and their password as uppercase into local storage. Well, I still understand if the person uh, tries to log in. If they create an account as victor at victor.com and now they're trying to log in as victor at victor.com, that is not going to work because the JavaScript and local storage and all of this, they see this as two completely different things. Mm -hmm. Even though that's got, you know, obviously I see it exactly the same as a human, but here the computer sees that these are completely different because one's uppercase, one's lowercase. So by forcing it all to uppercase, there's no problem there about did they type uppercase or lowercase. Mm -hmm. So if they were really fun and creative and they type, you know, Victor, capital R like that, it's going to be all completely capital letters in my local storage. Oh, thank you. Question? Is there a reason why you picked uppercase instead of lowercase? No real reason. Uh, that's the first one that popped into my head. We can do uppercase or lowercase. Exactly the same. Maybe we, maybe I can say, well, in the ASCII table of characters, uppercase letters are found first compared to lowercase letters. But that's just me BSing. Doesn't matter. Yes. Okay, this one here. Yeah, I never mentioned it before. Okay, we didn't use the dollar. I didn't use the dollar symbol. Here is, I personally feel that this dollar symbol here is to remind us that we used the jQuery um, selector to find the element. So we directly use jQuery to create that, that variable. So I prefix it with dollar to remind me of that. I didn't use directly the jQuery selector, so I didn't put it. It would work perfectly fine, however, if we did put them here too, we just need to remember to keep using it. So I don't think there will be a problem mixing the two, but we can do a little vote right now. Do we want to continue to use the dollar or not the dollar? Um, raise your hand if you want us to continue to use the dollar. You can vote more than once. We can continue to use the dollar. In regards oh to okay. which codes? Just this one part right here. We're, we're, we're only going to use this like two more times in all our 1,000 lines of code. All right, it's separate. Yeah, it's separate. So I can tell which one we're for the information's coming from. Okay, and now let's vote. Do we want it differently, like I have it here? Raise your hand for that. Okay, raise your hand if you didn't vote. Okay, great. So we'll keep it like this. This is, this is, uh, <laughs> this one here is, uh, again, because it's, it's coming like I, I used the jQuery selector, so that helps me remind me that I created with the jQuery selector, so that's there. This did not use the jQuery selector, so in my mind, personally, I mean, it's not necessary. So we'll keep it like that. Yeah. Um, I know you addressed it in the beginning of the uh, like first class, but I mean, beyond I mean, like jQuery UI. Being readily accessible, is it more advantageous to use JavaScript or jQuery? Oh, it's to some degree personal preference if you want to use jQuery versus plain old JavaScript. The idea to use a library like jQuery is because it's often shorter, less to type, meaning less errors. Um, the great example of that, like I showed before, that if we wanted to do uh, 
var this is equal to document dot get element by id parentheses this or this that that's equivalent to var this is equal to dollar quotes pound that basically equivalent but right here I need to remember how is the get element typed again oh there is not a capital D on that so plain old classic JavaScript is often much more verbose and you have to type it exactly every time uh, a library or a framework like jQuery well that's the same thing basically so it's just preference you could do it the long way the short way this also assumes you've got a connection to the jQuery library if you don't have the jQuery library which is what we have right here at the end of our index file right here if we don't have these connections to jQuery jQuery mobile then that won't even work and in theory would JavaScript be more secure than jQuery uh, I don't. I don't think so. I've never quite really heard it discussed in discussed in those terms versus security. I hear it talked about more in terms of efficiency or preference and such, but I don't quite hear it in terms of security. Mm -hmm. You have a point um, that that could make sense, but the thing is, when you're dealing with such a big famous project as jQuery, where all eyes are on jQuery and everyone wants it to be improved and people are like monitoring the code because you can look at the code and keep track of all of it it's like you know everyone's doing their best to keep it secure and even if like someone goes in and changes it uh, maliciously someone's gonna fix it like literally 10 seconds later you know our version that we downloaded 2.1 whatever when 2.2 comes out you know 2.3 comes out to fix what was the issue Well, a big company like that probably will use their own library because they do also want to copyright and lock down their code. But um, I know lots of uh, big projects out there that do use open source and follow it and even contribute back to it and help improve it. It's sort of a preference, but I could see the, the part about security. So in that sense, you know, writing the plain old verbose JavaScript in that sense would make sense when you want it to be the most removed from anyone else and just it's your code. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, did we choose to adopt the case for the password because we don't differentiate to the lowercase and the case A from the same as the password? That goes back to the issue about we're not quite dealing too much with security at the moment. Obviously, it's completely important when we get to the point that it's a live app and all of that. But yeah, at the moment, we're just putting it all uppercase. Even if the person put, you know, cat, capital C. Uh, we're forcing it all uppercase or all lowercase for ourselves internally. Um, we're yeah, we're just putting it all uppercase, and there are better ways to do it, which we'll get back to when we're a little bit more advanced into the project. All right, so here, let's see. So we've created these variables to start to then. Um, set up our login and log out confirming if they exist or not we'll do one more thing then we'll take a break um, let's see here actually wait let's take a break it's an hour and 20 minutes since our last break okay let's take a break right now I got yes. I'm I'm having so much fun coding. Um, let's do a little bit more. Yeah, it's already nine. So let's do just a little bit more. So let's do this. So 
after we um, after we've captured these things just to confirm what do I always say about just to kind of confirm how this works we want to do our our console log exactly so so console log let's confirm what are the things we're capturing here uh, so here we will do the we will do the the values of what we're capturing so we'll say console log uh, email is and then the variable that holds the email temp val in email login console log password is temp val in password login oops so again testing giving yourself some output as we uh, as we go through this let's say as as you say well what if I do this what if I do that I have this idea what if I want to add to it I recommend you give yourself feedback like this on a regular basis so that you can uh, troubleshoot it Okay, so I'm going to test that. I'm going to run it in Chrome, and I'm going to confirm that that works like I expect. All that we're doing at the moment, it's still not going to fully log in, of course, so um, I just want to see what it captures here. So I'll do uh, Janet at Janet.com, password, uh, I'll put capital J, Janet. And at the very least, it's going to say here, okay, well, function login is running. That's at least showing that, that the three basic steps are working. Creating the variable at the beginning worked. The dot submit worked. The function that I wrote works at least up to this point where it says function login is running. And then the... Um, email is this and the password is that now you cannot see what I typed in the password but you can see the email and you can see that it's become uppercase and that's what I want because I've stored things in local storage all in uppercase and this one was Janet with a capital J lowercase the rest and that's what appears that it sees